Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Angular 10 full tutorial series for absolute beginners. In today's episode, we are going to learn about HTTP interceptors. What are interceptors? Why do we need them? And how can it add value in our Angular applications? We will learn all about it in practical way in today's episode. This is part 78 of the Angular 10 complete tutorial playlist. I have planned more than 100 tutorials for you in the series. Today we are on the 78th episode. If you like my work, please do consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash arctutorials. The playlist link is in the description box below. So make sure you check out all the previously covered episodes so that you can learn and master Angular in detail. If you have any doubts in following topics that I've covered previously, please do reach out to me in the comment section. I will be happy to help you and clear your doubts. That being said, let's get started. A quick word to our viewers who are joining us new on HTTP client. HTTP client is used for performing HTTP requests and responses. Anything that we work with backend APIs or server, we will require to make a request. We make that using HTTP client. In order to work with HTTP client, we will have to import HTTP client module into our app module. HTTP client provides us useful functionalities like interceptors, headers, params, etc. I have covered all of these topics previously in the episode. So make sure that you check out the previous episodes to learn and master HTTP client. Today's topic is HTTP interceptors. So what are interceptors? I will walk you through some theory first and then show you practical use cases and we will do some hands-on lab as well. So let's learn about HTTP interceptors. HTTP interceptors intercepts and handles any HTTP request or HTTP response. Most interceptors transform the outgoing request before passing it to the next interceptor. Now, what do we mean by this? This is a very, very important line to understand because this is what you would be doing in most applications. Whenever we try to make a request to the backend APIs or server, we have to pass details like authentication token, username, passwords, etc. That's where our interceptors comes into major play. We can process the outgoing request, append more headers, params, etc. before actually making the call. And they, since they are done in the interceptor, you don't have to do it for each specific request. They are done for all outgoing requests. It is also rare, but a valid for an interceptor to return multiple responses on the event stream for a single request. We will see all of these details now in hands on lab. All right, so let me open up the application. Let me just fire this up here ng serve. This is our application and I will show you how to generate an interceptor, how to work with it. Let's allow one quick minute. In the meanwhile, please do consider subscribing to my channel to keep supporting and encouraging me. All right, so let's get this compiled. In the meanwhile, let me open up a notes for you so we can make some notes here. All right, so intercept any outgoing requests so we can add more details mostly i would say this is what most of the time we do we add authentication tokens uh, we add headers which has the uh, details of your username password roles etc but mostly in the form of tokens okay so that's where interceptors are mostly used interceptors are also used for common error handling across all HTTP requests, right? So this is what interceptors are mainly used for, right? So our application is compiled. So let's get started now. So if you are following along in this particular series in the customers module, we have added some code, which is to get the details. Let me show you here. All right. So if you see here, we did this previously in the episodes where we made a call using HTTP get request. So if you see this implementation, we added headers, 
we added the params and we are making a call to this particular URL. All right, so this is what we were doing so far. Now, if you see here in the customer's module, you would do all the error handling by yourself like here. So we are subscribing to this particular method, which is making a call to the API and we are processing the error here. But this has to be done for each request then. That doesn't make sense, right? So what we need to do is to add common functionality which can be used throughout all the requests, right? So if you see here, okay, my bad, let me open it here. It's 11, all right. Okay, I lost the notes, but it should be here. 12 okay so now what we are going to do we are going to first learn how to generate generate a HTTP interceptor okay so angular CLI has that provision so you can just run the command ng generate interceptor and given by the name of it that you want okay so let's go ahead and generate one and we are going to go into the project and here we are going to say ng generate interceptor followed by the name. So I'm going to call it a uh, common, right? That's a usually a simple name. It has to be inside the project. Okay. And that is simple CRM and then run the command here. All right. So once this is done, we would see that it will generate two files for us. You can see here interceptor.ts and the spec file, which is a unit testing file. All right, so we got our interceptor file created. Now let's check it out once. All right, so here you see common interceptor.ts, right? So here you will see that it has a request and the next. The request is the one that is the outgoing request that we want to process or clone or change it. The next is the next handler, which is where should it go next? So we can have multiple chain of interceptors that we want to do. One, we can have authentication. Next, let's say we have roles, etc. So we can have multiple interceptors also. For the sake of simplicity and for your learning, I'm keeping it simple so that you learn how to do it. So once we generate an interceptor, now we need to add it into our app module. So let's do that now. Go to our app module and in the providers, okay, you will write provide followed by you'll have to import HTTP interceptors and then you will write use class and this will be our interceptor that we used and followed by we will say multi is true, right? So now see what we have done. We have added and said that we are providing HTTP interceptors, which is again imported here, if you see, from Angular common HTTP. Now, once you have done it, you're telling which class to use, that is common interceptor and multi true, okay? So before I show you this, you should understand the difference between what is what will happen when you'd have an interceptor, what will happen when you don't have it. Difference when you have interceptor and when you don't have one okay so for that what i'm going to do i'll switch back to app module for a minute and i'm going to comment this line off okay so right now we are not providing the interceptor because i want to show you the difference so let's go to our application and refresh and type localhost and you would see this open inspect element and you have the network tab and I'm going to say slash customers and go to your log and you can see this is the request we are making for getting the customers. This is the URL we are requesting. Now if you see we are not changing anything here. Previously I showed you injecting the authentication token via headers, right? But that has to be done for each request. That doesn't make sense anymore. Instead, we want to have the common token mechanism through interceptor. So let's go ahead and fix that now. So re-enable this and I will show you the difference now. 
So once you have enabled the HTTP interceptors in common interceptor, let's go here and here we are going to work on this particular request. And what exactly are we going to do? We are going to change it. I'll show you how. Alrighty. So what we are going to do here is first just put a simple authentication key. Okay. Let's say we want to send an authentication token to all the outgoing request. So I'm going to define and say API underscore key is equal to some API key one two three some value. All right. And now I'm going to say request dot clone. Clone means copy this exact request that is coming in and then modify it. And then what are we going to modify? We are going to set headers. And here we are going to pass our headers, which is API underscore key. Now see this says no overload matches, right? So we need to pass some headers, which is something like this. So here we are going to pass this and add one more and then we can say save. All right. So now what we have done, we have set an API key, which has a value and we are setting it as a header. Now this header will be added to all the outgoing request. Let's see it in action. Let's run it again. Let's refresh and go to our console and network. Now let's open our request that has gone and let's see what the values are going. And here we can clearly, we should see the values that we are setting. So this is options. Don't look at options, look at the get. So here you see this value API underscore key that got added through the interceptor. Okay. Let me show you one more so that you know how it is done. Now here we can add one more and we'll call it um, role underscore key and this let's call it role. Okay. So now here you are setting the so now we are setting API key and we are setting the role key as headers in our request dot clone. So what this does is basically clone clone means copy the existing request and modify it. Okay. You're taking the request that is coming in, then adding or appending these headers and sending it out, save it. And you should see that in action. Now go to your console in and here in the get call, you would see API underscore key and role underscore key. So these are the values that got added, appended through interceptor. Extremely useful concept when you're working with authentication tokens, auth tokens or user validation, role validations, etc. Okay. So now you don't have to do for individual request. It is done at the interceptor level. So we can go ahead and remove any unwanted code that we made as part of our user service. So see here, we are in the HTTP params here. We are setting the headers. Now we can safely remove this headers because we don't have to set it for each request. We can directly do it at the interceptor level. We don't need this headers anymore here, right? Because we set the headers in our common interceptor dot TS, right? So that is the beauty of interceptors. Now let me show you how you work with it when you have error handling. Okay. So I'm going to comment this, take it here. All right. So once you have this handle, right? So you can always write a dot pipe and you can work with it and say dot pipe. And here you can write dot catch error. And furthermore, you can work with any of the things like uh, retry, right? So if you're working with, um, if you're working with RxJS, you would know that you would do something like catch error and you would do a global kind of object like this and you can capture all the things that you want. Okay. So now let's, I'm going to import it. So once you have the RxJS installed, probably you will get this. So I have not done it, but this is how you can do common uh, error handling also, or you can say retry X number of times, etc. 
So go ahead, give it a try to interceptors. Let me know because I am going to cover RxJS with uh, Angular very soon, wherein I will cover pipe, map, catch error, all of these options for you in detail. But for now today, focus on learning and implementing interceptors. That's the point of discussion today. So make sure that you master it well. Try to add some headers. Try to send it to your request and you would see that for every request you are adding the headers and it's working as expected. All right. So that was all about uh, interceptors that you should know in today's episode. And like I said, uh, generate it using ng generate interceptor, provide it in the app module wherever you want to use it. And then in the next dot handle clone or modify that request based on your application. In the next episode, I'm going to cover about HTTP observables, subscribe and to promise because these are the most frequently used when you're working with any HTTP uh, client requests. Stay tuned for that. If you like my work, please do consider subscribing to my channel. Also, please do. Uh, if you like my work, please do consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash arc tutorials. Thank you so much for joining. See you in the next episode.